Good afternoon, sir. How are you? Hey. What's up? Is it too loud, the construction? No. No? We're good? <laughs> we're good. Thank you for hopping up, man. What do you think about the demo today? What do you what, think? What, what are your thoughts? What can I mean, you say? It's ridiculous. It's crazy. It's like, you know, I mean, if this isn't destruction of evidence, I don't know what is. All of those of us, you know, there's a lot of creators on one side that say he's innocent. There's a lot of creators on the other side that say he's guilty. I've tried to remain neutral. I try to, as an attorney, right. grant him the presumption of innocence. And I try really hard to do that. But there's something wrong with this. There's something really wrong with this today. There's something very wrong. I don't care what either of the attorneys on either side say. They're both very experienced attorneys, but this is wrong. Especially when two of the families are coming out and they make a very valid point. What if one of the what if this meant something to one just one of the jury members? That's important. And what I don't understand is <clears throat> why not let all families have their wish? The, the house is going to be torn down. It was already a known fact that would have happened at any point. So why not also listen to the families that don't want it torn down yet? Because they're not saying don't ever tear it down. They're just saying, what if it's important to one of the jury members? And so that's where I'm like, why the rush? Why even this morning you're hurrying up? You, you're already rushing this morning. You've been rushing ever since the first day this crime took place, no matter what it was, from the beginning of the community's safety all the way to starting this demo today. It's all been a rush. Even the oh, arrest. you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right, and that's kind of in line with one of my thoughts. And one of my thoughts is I've tried cases in two states, and I'm not licensed in Idaho, so I can't comment on what they do in Idaho. But I am licensed in uh, Massachusetts and in New Hampshire. And when I was younger, I tried an awful lot of cases in both uh, states. And you never, and no trial attorney who's being honest will tell you that any trial goes exactly as planned. There are always surprises. And in my two jurisdictions, guess what? The jurors are allowed to ask questions, not orally. They've got to write it down on a card or they're given a slip of paper. But the jurors oh. are allowed in my two jurisdictions to oh. ask questions. Now, those questions wow. go to the judge and there's a bench conference and the attorneys on both sides take a look and decide, you know, whether or not we want those questions to go forward. But 99.9% .9 of the time, unless it's a stupid question, we allow those questions to go forward because you want the jury to be on your side. Now, like I said before, I've never tried a case and no trial attorney who's telling you the truth will tell you they've ever tried a case where there aren't surprises. Now, what if a couple of the jurors or even one juror says, Geez, you know what? Somebody said something about an angle or a distance or a lighting or something. Can we go over there and just check it out? What 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 are they going to tell that juror? What are they going to tell him? This they can't. is this this is just uh, it's wrong. And I saw I saw an article that um, that uh, the the chief Mr. Thompson uh, was quoted in, and then the newspaper uh, writer went over and talked to another prosecutor, and they both said, "Oh yeah, this is okay." Well, why isn't there any journalism in Idaho that um, people are actually getting both sides of the story and digging into it? Why aren't there journalists out there digging into the story just like those diggers are digging into the ground right now? <laughs> right, it's this. I mean, even on Twitter, that's I'm, I've been having updates coming on Twitter. Local people that are are reporters or used to be. There's nothing. It's all just, yep, the house is done. You know, it's nothing. That's why I was surprised there was no kind of protest set up. I was surprised when I came back from the holidays because I was away from social media for a couple of days. I was surprised when I came back from the holidays that there wasn't even any kind of lawsuit filed or something. You know, even if you didn't have... Th th this is a question I would have for you, Mr. Myers. 
Mm -hmm. Even if I didn't have all the money to fulfill all the court hearings or appointments that it would take in order to have a successful lawsuit, just say I had enough money to start it. That's it. Just to start it. Is that... Would that be out of the realm of a possibility where just for me, even though I can't afford it to go the long haul, I can afford it just to start it. Would that have been something in your uh, profession, in your jurisdiction? Is that something that somebody could do? When you, when you say to like, start it, to start what, a petition to keep the thing up? No, not a petition, a civil lawsuit against the university claiming that it could be potential evidence as in a juror member could find it very important to them when it came to the innocence or guilt of BK. The problem with that is that uh, you, neither you nor I nor any, because I've had people ask me similar types of questions and we don't have standing in the case. To bring any kind of a, a lawsuit, you have to have standing. And the only people that have standing in this case are parties at interest. And the only people that have- The family. Well, yeah, no, like the not even. No, no. no. The, the, prosec really? the, pros the prosecutor, the state, the defense, which is also the state uh, it, uh, the, through the, the defense mechanism in Idaho and the university. Those are the only people that really have standing. Uh, the um, sure the families could sure the families could bring a, 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 an argument and say, sure, we have standing because, you know, we, we represent the victims and go through the prosecutor's office. But no, you or I don't have standing. You or I, you know, we, we could file papers and the court would just kick them out. Well, this is what I find interesting because Brian Etten had a tweet and I'll share the link for the tweet. He's a good reporter. Yeah, I love Brian Etten. He's one of the, you know, Sarah Azari, Brian Etten, and uh, Chanley Painter, really the only mainstream media that I really put a lot of thought into and in what they're saying. This is what Brian Etten was saying. Uh, he said, I'm told the only way to stop the Idaho House from demolition would be through a civil action a family member of a victim could file a lawsuit against the university of idaho then ask for an injunction claiming the house's evidence legal fees would be expensive sure um, yeah they so, could bring that lawsuit but but the question is with anybody can bring any lawsuit i could bring a lawsuit to have little men come down from mars but the question is 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 that a justiciable issue um and wouldn't it know, have stopped it though like wouldn't it have put the pause on what we're seeing right here? Just if I, and that's what I was saying. Brian Etten says it could be expensive. Well, what if I just have a fifth of what it would cost to go to long haul? And that fifth, that one fifth is me starting one fifth of the process of me trying to complete this injunction that the house is evidence. Well, I'm not going to argue with Mr. Renton because he's a fantastic reporter. I follow his stuff, <laughs> and I have since the very beginning. But again, yeah. you know, if that if that were a real possibility, why didn't why didn't some of the people uh, that represent the victims' families who are so outspoken, right. why didn't Mr. they Ray. do it? It's 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 really difficult to bring. I've 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 brought cases against the state. I've brought cases against the university in totally different circumstances. And they don't make it easy. Now, I don't know what the tort claims at law is in Idaho. I know what it is in uh, Mass, in New Hampshire. But anytime you bring any kind of an action against the state, they throw up so many roadblocks that they'd probably still be, you know, correcting their, getting out their erasers and correcting the papers. So, mm. you know, that's my answer to that question is I don't know the Idaho law, but, you know, if yeah. it was possible, don't you think they would have, don't you think somebody would have done think it? so. But this is where I'm coming from too, Andrew. When I, when I, when I woke up, not when I woke up yesterday, and as I'm waiting throughout the whole day, I'm kind of like, okay, this is the day before, this is the 27th, this is the fourth quarter, two minutes to go. Why is there nobody on the court? Why is there nobody standing out there? Why isn't there anybody telling the local media, come meet us down here? Why was there no flyers handed out? Like, why was there 
to be when i came back from the holidays and i was away from social media and i'm like holy crap nothing really took place i don't understand no civil lawsuit that wasn't done there wasn't even anybody standing out there this morning i'm shocked yeah. i was surprised too i kind of thought that somebody would do something along those lines i i i really did think that they, if it was possible they try again it's really difficult but to the point you made about the media I'm just shocked that the media in that area, in uh, Pullman, Washington, uh, even the Spokane newspapers, and even the uh, newspapers in Idaho, um, I'm shocked at the coverage. I've followed some of it. I've read some of the newspaper articles out there, and they're just, here's, I, I was a reporter before I went to law school. I was a reporter. And oh. They, cool. Yeah. And before the, you know. A lot of reporters, first of all, there's not much reportage anymore anyhow because nobody reads newspapers. They've scaled back. The Sunday newspapers used to be like that. Now they're like that. And they don't want to burn their sources. They go, they, 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 the police department is a big source. And the reporters all want to get that next scoop. They, I'm not going to say they suck up, but they respect the local law enforcement entities they call them on the phone. They try and, you know, be friends with them at the Rotary or at the golf course or wherever it is. They try and maintain a friendly relation. So if there is ever a big break, they get the phone call and they yep. get the exclusive. So they are not going to, and I've said this on my podcast, they don't want to rock the boat with the local officials. So there has been no objective reporting of this case in any of the press that I've seen in Idaho or Washington because they are on the side of the police. They want the police to cooperate with them and they want to cooperate with the police. So it's I'm sure 100. I'll get nasty. I'll, I'm sure I'll get nasty comments for saying this, but I'll no. say it again. There's been it's terrible the reporting. There's been terrible it's reporting in that area. Awful. When, Just awful. When I, when I went out to PA for the uh, the manhunt, the Daniello Calvacanti. Oh, yes. Right? Yes. It, the fumbaloo of the local PD was like, yo, right? Yeah. In the P and there was local Twitter people out there that yeah. were reporting, and they were all buddy-buddy with how yeah. the local PD was doing their thing. And it's like, bro, they're not even – like – yeah, you're 100. So if anybody wants to type something shitty, whatever. There were two great true. podcasters. Do you want me to mention their names or would you rather that go I ahead. don't? No, go ahead. Uh, JLR did a fantastic job during that whole Danilo Cavacante. Yeah. Thing. He was right yeah. on top of it the whole time yeah. when they were yeah. uh, circled around the Longwood Gardens there. Yeah. And the other one yeah. was T Rev. T Rev did a fantastic job. He had like 90 different scanners and he was on track with what the helicopters were doing. But yeah, you're right. The local the local reportage is just, you know, it's just oh, by the way, I'm from that area. I'm born and raised in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, which is really? the next county. Yeah, for the next county over from where that whole thing happened. So I was very familiar Man. with that area. And when they were all circled around Longwood Gardens, I was saying he's gonna sneak out of there. And sure enough, he did. He did, didn't he? Yeah, <laughs> it, it's uh, it's crazy. If you guys do have any questions, I got a couple for you here. If you okay. do have any questions, go ahead and type them in, and then uh, I'll go ahead and star them as we're talking, and then we'll take a small time out if you want to answer some of them. That's crazy, though. You went from a reporter to a criminal lawyer to a no, civil no. lawyer. I'm a civil no. litigator. I've done I've done some so you, criminal. I've done some criminal, but I'm largely a civil litigation attorney. So civil you stuff. like you went wow, and you went through a whole. I got to have you on for uh, conversations with. CJ I'm here. Sometime. That's <laughs> uh, not Idaho four, where we're just it's a conversations <laughs> with CJ. We're just sitting down. You're drinking your water or whatever's in your cup, and I'm drinking my coffee, and we just have a, a conversation about uh, your story, man. I bet it's very interesting. I mean, especially being a reporter. Oh, whatever. Oh, whatever. It's got to be. Um, no, Laney then, and I would like to have you on sometime soon. Laney and I would like to meet you uh, again because we did yeah. it once, and uh, the connection was not that good. But uh, Yeah, my bad. My my people have asked me to have you on again, so hopefully we can do that yeah. soon. Uh, right. Well, I'm back from the holidays, and I'm not going okay. anywhere for the new year. So whenever you guys would like, even if it's tomorrow, just let me know. Okay. And 
we'll definitely All right. well there is the demo but honestly i could take time out of because you're really not going to be seeing anything that much anyway but i'm still gonna go ahead and check that out let's uh, let me go to some of these questions here real quick um okay. let me see here crime solver can you ask the attorney if he thinks this is a way of telling us we aren't going to trial for whatever reason in so many words oh my god now that it, that calls for speculation <laughs> we, that's we all we are we have a, we we attorneys have a thing called i object to the form of the question <laughs> no, <they're, laughs> no of course they're going to try their case why, why wouldn't they try their case they think Do you think you think it's going to be summer 2024 no no, do you? I don't think so either. No, no. No, no I doubt it. No. 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 Any other questions? Uh, let me see. Uh, Brooke says, does demolition of the property give any indication of a possible plea deal before uh, a possible plea deal being discussed? That's a good question. Especially if they both agree. I can't see. But I, then they I wouldn't have fought. They wouldn't have came out with what they just came out with then, where they're asking the judge to reconsider the grand jury indictment, indictment denial. That is a perfunctory thing. The motion for the grand jury dismissal was a perfunctory thing. Any defense attorney that doesn't bring that motion is uh, is looking for a, a claim for inefficient assistance of, of counsel. And so now the re request for a reconsideration is another layer of just, uh, you know, due diligence doing their job because they want to, after that, they want to bring what's called an interlocutory appeal to the appellate court. That's a little bit unusual. That's a little bit above the top. I think they could get away with not doing that and not be subject to uh, an ineffective assistance of counsel uh, motion. But, you know, in a death penalty case, in a death penalty case, you've got to do everything to the max. I mean, you don't want mm. someone, you know, put to death and you didn't do every single thing you could possibly think of. You didn't, you know, go to the civil procedure or the criminal procedure teacher and say, what else? What else? What? So they're 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 covering their bases. I truly think that the defense will do everything and anything they can to get a not guilty. And they might. Interesting. Interesting. You know, a good a good defense attorney can cross examine the living you know what out of uh, these witnesses and you know Bethany Funk and uh, the way I see it Bethany Funk and Dylan Mortensen are not I hate to say it I don't think they're solid witnesses I don't think they agree mm -hmm. I think they have two different stories mm -hmm. God love uh, I feel the same God love um, Dylan Mortensen uh, you know she's lived through a horrible 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 thing but as you've pointed out the stuff that she's said in the um probable cause affidavit or the things that were said that she said don't make any sense i'm sorry uh so you know we, we're gonna have experts i talked about this on my podcast which we haven't dropped yet we're gonna have experts we're gonna have a forensics expert a criminology expert Ooh. god knows how many god knows how many Cell Ooh, phone nice. experts. Do you remember the? Don't you remember the Murdoch trial and how many yeah. experts they have? Well, we're gonna. Yeah, have I brought that up. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I even thought about replaying for Idaho four shows. I even thought about replaying some of the testimonies of the cell phone. You know, different things like that, as part of the Idaho four shows because I feel like we're gonna be seeing the same stuff. As I've been yes. doing these OJ25 yes. members only lives and we're watching different parts of that trial, I'm sitting there going, this is what we're, oh man, I can't we're wait gonna to have, see this We're going to have cell Idaho. phone experts, electronic yeah. experts, um, intellectual property experts. We're going to have so many experts that, and I'm still trying to I'm answer your time. question about whether there's going to be a plea. There's going to be <laughs> so many experts on both sides. The jury's jurors and i've studied this i've gone to seminars i was a member of the american trial lawyers association which changed their name to the american uh, the american association for justice uh, and i've been to a million seminars and bottom line a lot of times not always but a lot of times juries say gee this expert said this 
But that expert said the opposite. We can either sit here all, all day amongst ourselves and argue uh -huh. it or just forget the experts and what did the percipient witnesses say? Well, now we're back to good old Dylan and Bethany. I think a good defense attorney could get an acquittal in this case. Really? I do. I do. Really? Why do you? Okay, why do you feel that way? That's interesting. Well, Brian, Brian himself, when he was arrested, he said, uh, you know, I, I want to exonerate myself. And yeah. a good attorney can cross-examine people. I think the touch DNA is questionable. I think mm -hmm. the touch DNA, and I uh, read through a case in the episode that we recorded yesterday. We haven't dropped yet. Uh, it's a Connecticut case, but it addressed how touch DNA is not to be relied upon. And they will, if the defense is doing their job, they're going to yeah. get an expert to say that and to dig into that. And this is current technology. This is a 10 year ago technology. This is current technology. There's a lot going on on the DNA front. We don't even know about uh, judge. Judge has not ruled on the matter of the DNA yeah. evidence that was Still submitted waiting. on December 1st. So Still waiting. And, you know, I don't know. I don't know. He was circ he was said to have been circling around there a dozen times. Well, maybe he was going to Emma Bailey's house. I don't know. I thought it was. I don't know. Uh, I thought it was crazy when right his defense. Yeah. When his defense. Yeah. She lived only a mile away when the defense right said, oh, well, it's his it's his alibi. He was just driving around. I thought that was nuts. Like ninety nine percent of Americans. I thought that was nuts. Then yeah. people told me. That's something kids do. <laughs> That's something it. kids, they just drive around at night because they they can't sleep. They're all hopped up on the, the Internet stuff they've been doing all day. You know, that stuff melts your brain. Mm -hmm. I know personally because it's, well, anyhow. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I don't I don't know. I, I yeah. I, why would he flee? Well, think why about would you it. flee? Think, of, think about this. It, it helps you settle anxiety as a parent, right? One of the things you would do is if your baby wouldn't stop fussing, you would go for a car ride. Why? Because it settles the anxiety. Why wouldn't somebody go for car rides, especially if they're reported vacuuming at 2 in the morning and being loud at 2, 3 in the morning? Well, then you would probably be up and be unsettled and it would be one of the nights where you would you know when you're battling an addiction as as hard as h huh. you know and you and you've made it through that kind of addiction i don't know if i never i don't know from experience but i have friends mm -hmm. and close ones that do have suffered from it do suffer from it and if you can make it out of that and you're doing what you're doing collegiate wise, uh, you know, your studies, your accomplishments. It, so what if you're having a hard time that last month? If you're trying whatever you can do to fight that, I, why wouldn't you go for a drive late at night instead of going to because, you know, you're thinking about it or you can't get it out of your mind. You're stressed. You have no outlet. And you're trying to do the healthy thing and just go for a drive. Yeah, I thought it was crazy when that uh, alibi, I, I, I saw it as a non-alibi. I thought I thought it was nuts. But um, they remember I'm they shocked. said they remember they said that they would some the words to the effect of and don't jump all over me, people, if I'm not getting the words correctly. But they said something to the effect that we will show that he had reason yeah. to be in that area at night. Yeah. So now. I kind of made fun of that. I kind of said that's not an al alibi. And I had some real not nice comments. And one woman even wanted me to call her. And she actually uh, lived in Pullman, uh, Washington, and went to school at University of Idaho. And she shout she yelled at me on the phone. She said, you know, I used to do that. There's not much to do in Pullman. So there's we used to go We used to go over to, uh, to uh, Moscow all the time because there's shops, there's delis, there's this, there's that. Their Walmart is bigger. I don't know if that's true because I tried to check that oh, it out. Is. Anyhow, it, it is. It is. Yeah, it so is. So she said... When I was in college, you know, I couldn't sleep and I would frequently just go out at night and drive around. So I stand corrected on saying that his initial alibi was garbanzo beans. But, yeah. So yeah, I, I was shocked. I mean, I was shocked. But at the same time, it's like there was private ride chair drivers out there driving around. 
we we did the deep dive into the grub truck a long time ago people are driving around all over moscow mm -hmm. on the grub truck video you can hear them driving all over if you think the linda lane footage is real or i should say the time stamp if you think the time stamp's real people driving around that late and i'm telling you i was driving around getting footage during those time periods and there was people walking all over the place i mean that was one of the things you had to for me myself because at nighttime especially when an area is as dark as what it is um I have a hard time seeing the street signs at night. Mm -hmm. So when I'm driving around, you really, with how scrunched it is, how you barely even most of the time only had enough room to drive one vehicle down a road, even though it mm -hmm. was a two way street. There was so many times you had to constantly just be on guard like crazy because people would be walking from behind cars, just walking across streets uh, a lot. I mean, I couldn't believe it. Then that was one of the biggest things about Pullman and Moscow was Pullman at a, after, you know, 10 at night, you know, you got that little couple block area. That's like a downtown district mm -hmm. that has your uh, establishments and stuff, you know, well lit. Other than that, there's not much around there that is active. And so it is a lot more quiet and settled and calm and over in Moscow, I mean, you're driving around through downtown, you're driving around through uh, the campus area, and there's nothing but people just walking around, walking around, walking around. Yeah, and at all hours, too. I lived in a college yeah. town. I lived in a college town for a couple of years, and I also went to both undergrad and law school in Boston, and I lived in Boston and Cambridge. Those towns do not sleep. Now, it's yeah. not Moscow, Idaho, but Cambridge and Boston. Do not sleep, especially the Back Bay area of Boston and the uh, Harvard Central Square areas of Cambridge. People are up at all hours of the night. I lived around the corner from a nightclub in Cambridge. And when they let out at two o'clock in the morning, the party just went out on the street and people were up all hours. So, you know, I like I said before, I, I didn't really give much credence to Mr. Coburn's alibi but it is true i'm told it's true <coughs> young people are up i'm too old to be driving around at three four o'clock <laughs> at night oh, but yeah. a lot of people do i'm told that yeah. a lot of people do and uh, laney law kind of backed them up and not me so you know my ears are open my ears are open my mind is open i would be i would be i wouldn't put the mortgage money on it but i'd put the coffee money on the fact that he will not uh, plea. He will not take a plea, and there will be a no. trial. Yeah, I don't think no. so. I think I think things would be a little different if if uh, there was going to be a plea. Um, my cousin lived in Pullman and went to Moscow three to four times a week. She liked the dining and shopping there. Her husband taught veterinary science at WSU. Interesting. Yeah, that is interesting. That's kind of on the line of what that uh, that uh, commenter told me in no uncertain terms in our telephone conversation. And Bama brings up a good point, too. And this is why, just because, see, they wanted to show the judge, Just this was right after they had the secret grand jury indictment, right? Mm -hmm. After they had the secret grand jury indictment, then shortly after that, Ann Taylor uh, provided the partial alibi. I'm going to tell you he wasn't there, you know, in front of the prosecution. I'm going to tell you he wasn't there, but I want to show just the judge the rest of what we have. And I, why wouldn't she want to keep some of that to, to her own, right? And just show the judge and show the judge, look, this is why this is his alibi, but we don't want them to have it because they've done pieced everything together to create all of this. They're just going to take this information and then piece it together to make it match what they're trying to get everything to match anyway. And so yeah. who's to say he wasn't a delivery driver, a, a door, you know, who's to say he wasn't doing any of that stuff that he wasn't just out driving. He could have had a purpose too. We don't know because, but there would have been cameras that he could have said, yes, my car was driving in front of freaking A and W 
at this time so they should have the footage and you should have the footage and it should show that i'm driving around this time period well you know a lot more about that than i do because i've seen your shows and you actually shared some video with me thank you yeah, very much room right here so you know a lot more about that area than i do and i guess that area is a lot more wired with cameras than i ever even realized i mean oh, i would boy I would have thought that an area like that wouldn't necessarily have so many security cameras. But, yeah, you're right. But that that could cut either way. Either he says, yeah, I was driving on Street A or Street B at such and such a time. And there is, you know, verification through the cameras or there isn't. So right. that, that could be tough. That could be tough for him. I mean, with all those cameras, I mean, it was a huge difference. That's why. That's why I wanted to show the route that if somebody really was trying to get, get away with this crime, they would have took this road instead. They're not going to be going all over Pullman and all, all over Moscow. And with the real footage, I wanted to really show like every camera you would have been driving down according to the route of the PCA just to show the difference between the road that somebody would have took and the route of the PCA. It yeah, was, like, I don't remember the numbers. It was like a hundred and we just counted possible businesses and I counted half of the businesses, just half. And I think we were at 120 something to 20, 120 something to 12 was the camera difference. That's not counting uh, homes or every business for that matter. Well, yeah, I saw I, I'm watching this now uh, on on your screen and I'm also um, remembering watching a lot of the stuff that you've uh, put on in the past, which is incredible. Thank what you, if I his alibi that. is and this is only speculation, so don't yell at me, people uh, comment, whatever you want to say about me. But what if his alibi was he was out buying drugs? Could have been. You know, I mean, I was going to see it if not been. Emma Bailey, somebody else. I mean, let's <laughs> face it. And I've gotten in trouble for saying it before, but it's true. The word party means drugs. Come on now. If somebody comes up to you and says, hey, man, let's party. They don't mean let's go play pin the tail on the donkey and eat some Doritos. <laughs> that ain't what they mean. So, like, we don't know, and I'm only speculating, so say whatever you want about me. But, you know, I admire him if in truly, if in fact he truly you know, beat his addiction and he was no longer addicted because I've never had those problems, but I, I know people who have, and God love them for going through what they went through because it's a horrible thing, like you said before, to beat it. But, you know, so there's all kinds of other stuff and alternatives and things that are available. Uh, and um, you Especially know, no living in that. Washington. You know? Especially living in any in any college town. Come on. No, I mean, kids are doing. You, dude, there's a freaking dispensary right on the border of Washington State and Idaho. Well, not who just says, that. But who says that, his alibi wasn't him picking up stuff from the dispensary that was legal for him and going to drop stuff off in Moscow? Or maybe buying, at Walmart. Or maybe, maybe he was picking up Walmart. some. He might have been picking up some Molly or something else. I mean, who knows? There's <laughs> no. so many things that are out there <laughs> speculating. Good. But hey, if that's his alibi, it's not murder. It's drugs, it's not, but it's not murder. I'd rather, I don't want to be convicted of anything. I've never been convicted of anything above, above being a lead foot when I was in my 30s. But I mean, I'd rather be convicted of drugs than murder because, you know, I mean, oh, sure. it should be obvious. I mean, so we don't know. We don't know what his alibi was and we don't know how solid the um, evidence is. I mean, if, if truly there are solid um, cameras showing that he was driving around and he doesn't have an excuse. Sure, the jury's going to have a hard time with that. But again, go back to the Alexander Murdoch uh, case, and there were just so many experts. If there's so many experts around, and well, at first they said it was a 2011 to 2013 Elantra, but it was really a 2015. Well, yeah, they looked the but same. Not well, Centra first. The first the one was first. Centra, yeah. So, I mean, they're going to get all these experts and they're going to have these cars. And unless they have a picture of him in a car in front of 1122 or on the yeah. side street, as you've pointed out. Uh, it ain't unless they, yeah, yeah. You know, and so uh, th there's going to be a million experts on both sides and the experts will cancel each other out. The half of the jury is going to like this expert. The half, the, the other half of the jury is going to like that expert. And they're going to throw in the towel and say, OK. What do the recipient witnesses say? What do Bethany and Dylan say? And 
So that's where the case is. You know, he could be found guilty, but I think I think there's a chance he could be found not guilty. Oh, for sure. Do you know any? Do you know any uh, law professionals in Idaho at all? No, no. no. Right. I'm an East Coast okay. boy. I'm an East Coast was boy. I was question. born and raised in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and then at the age of 18, I came up to Boston to go to college. And I've, you know, I've been in that area. Uh, yeah. I'm in Southern New Hampshire. I, you know, I, but I've been in that. So I'm an East Coast boy. Yeah, when we were uh, when we went to the the manhunt i went to DeSalle university as well where Coburger went um that's a beautiful campus uh I've never been there yeah that's a beautiful campus and the statue out front of the building where he learned under ramsland there's like a statue of like uh uh it's like a christian statue but it's got like uh uh you know, like powerful figures or whatever, and then children around it, and then you get the sunlight coming down, and uh, it's a it's a it's a beautiful view, a beautiful campus. Uh, really small. I was kind of shocked how small it was. But is Scrant is uh, is DeSales in Scranton? It's um, I'm trying to remember the city. I don't remember. It's in the middle of nowhere. I know that. I had to drive. This is what was crazy is because I was taking the interstate. And I had to hop off the interstate and literally drive in the boonies for a good chunk of time, a good hour to two hours. Mm -hmm. uh, it's in the middle of nowhere. It Scranton. Pen Pennsylvania is a huge, huge, huge state. And I lived in southeastern Pennsylvania and I've only been through Pittsburgh on the train. So, I mean, it's a huge state. I've been up to Penn State. That's a beautiful, beautiful area. I've been to Philly when I was a kid. I went to Philly a lot. I had friends that went to uh, Drexel and Temple and UPenn. Uh, but yeah, Pennsylvania is a huge state. Uh, Poconos are a beautiful area. You can yes. drive. Uh, you can drive through that area forever and not not yeah. see a whole lot other than the uh, the racetrack and uh, you know woods. But anyhow, so. Um, you know, I, I just, it's just, uh, it's abysmal what's happening here. I can't believe that they're tearing it down. I just, you know, it's just shocking. It's shocking it to me. Uh, it's just, and why would they, why wouldn't they leave it up until the trial? Why, wh what's to gain or lose people? Like I said, in the comment before I came on, uh, the, uh, university president, Mr. Green has said that, well, we want people to forget about this. Well, when the twin towers came down, did people forget about nine 11? That's no. my question for Mr. Green, who apparently he shut you off. Yeah, he blocked me. This was well, in the spring. Yeah, because I asked him about the house demolition. And because we we found out that it was donated, uh, I think right. it was March. So I think April is when we found out it was actually donated in March. And then that's when we were uh, the channel. We were doing, um, I was trying to get everybody to uh, contact um, the local elected officials. Because this is when the, one of the first times they were threatening to demo the house. And so I was trying to get everybody to contact their local uh, elected officials, senators, governors, uh, you know, any elected officials. Call them, email them. I put out their phone numbers, their emails, um, and even President Green of the University of Idaho, uh, his phone number and email as well. And I encouraged everybody to let them know. It might have been the first time they were threatening the demo. I, w I was encouraging everybody, let these people know, like, this isn't right. Uh, the There's something going on. There's something going on in this case that none of us know anything about. And that's why I'm so disappointed in the... Uh, in the media out there for not persistently, yeah. you know, trying to work this case around the edges and digging into it because, you know, I mean, there's such a shroud of secrecy between the gag order and 20 rounds of discovery, all of which has been sealed. Uh, all of the uh, participants are, are uh, observing that gag order. There's, there's, you know, obviously there's a lot going on that we do not know about. And so, Maybe what Mr. Gonzalez said is true, that um, they, they're so certain that they have him. They just have such airtight evidence that um, they don't need this premises. Maybe that's true. We do not know. We have no idea what's going on in this case. But, 
you know, so one of my one of my commenters said, well, Mr. Myers, you know, they never tell you what's going on in a criminal case. And that's just not true. There's there, there are other cases that, you know, we we hear little bits and pieces and what's going on and we have a good idea. I mean, sure, the prosecution doesn't want to show their full hand before the trial. And sure, the defense wants to play their cards close to the, But this this case exceeds all of that by, you know, tons, by tons and tons and tons. And it's just it's, it's going to be a billion times bigger than OJ, you know, 10, 10 years from now, you know, five years, 10 years from now, it's going to be bigger already. But what I mean by a billion times bigger is instead of everybody going back to the OJ case, it's going back to this one. You're probably right. I mean, I've take, never, I've never seen a case with so much interest. Stuff. Have you well, seen not, ever a case interest. with so much interest? I, I mean, the technology. Oh. The, the technology, the experts that are going to have to be involved, because yeah. back then in the OJ case, that was 1993, 90, 94. 94. That was 94. That was when, hell, Magic Johnson just came out a year or two before that and announced that he was HIV positive and had to retire. Mm -hmm. There was so much misunderstanding about the technology there was you know so now that we know because a lot of the stuff we know about dna is from the oj case so mm -hmm. now that we know and we've gone through what 30 years now where we've studied oj we've studied all these different cases with dna you got labs coming out exoneration projects all these things but this right here the touch DNA, the, the the 20 skin cells on the button snap of a sheath, and the technology that came from matching up that DNA, because when you're talking CC Moore, she's saying it's an art form. Because you can't, there's no accreditation for it. And she's the lead person of it. And when she says it's an art form that's a new technology they're still learning they haven't perfected it yet they're still manipulating and adding to and you know so you can't there's a reason why you can't rely on that when it comes to a conviction like you were saying earlier because it's just too new so you take how new it was in the oj case and you take how new this new dna stuff is when it comes to because back then we had liquid. We're just talking mining, you know, little skin right. cells. Huge. I, I heard a, I heard a rumor in one of my comments, and I can't confirm it. So I've I've never really talked about it. Uh, I don't know if you've heard about this, and it's only a question. I'm not making a statement, folks. I had a comment that there was a gun and knife show in Moscow, Idaho, that weekend. And if there was, maybe some, maybe Kohlberger went and picked up the knife and touched it and put it down, and then somebody else bought it. I've never been able to verify that. I don't. I've gone online. I've I not know. been able to. I've not been There's able to verify that. that. I don't know if it's. I think it was the week before, and there also was a special screening of Scream in Moscow a couple of weeks before the crime took place too. Because I had a. a, a I'm not going to mention any names, but I had a young family member a young family member we went to the beach and you know how they all have all those shops at the beach well one of the shops had knives and those those circular things you you hurl and you know the little, all kinds of sharp objects so she has a fascination with these things so we went into the shop and it wasn't busy and the guy behind the counter you know she was kind of cute at the time and it was, she still is of course guy behind the counter was really accommodating and gave her all these things. And she was like looking at them. She was looking at these knives. And I don't know the name of the round thing that you can hurl and do a lot of damage. Anyhow, she would take these things and touch them and look at them and examine them and be really fascinated. Then she'd give them back and he would give her the next one. So now her touch DNA was all over that stuff. What if, what if somebody had bought it and then they'd have found her touch DNA on it? We'd have had a problem, wouldn't we have? Well, what if the guy that was letting her here try this one, try this one? What if he took him home and knew what he was going to do with them? So it, it, that's speculation. Oh, anybody. That, that's speculation. But 
again, I read the jury instruction on my podcast several times now, and the Idaho standard jury instruction says, it goes on for a paragraph or two paragraphs, but in the end, it says that if you have any reasonable doubt, you must find the defendant not guilty. Not that you might or that you can deliberate or you can think about it. It says if you have any reasonable doubt, you must find the defendant not guilty. So, folks, we're talking about some areas, like you said, the uh, touch DNA uh, area is is still it's growing new. and it's an art form. But that touch DNA could have come from anywhere. I don't, that, and I, you know, uh, some great, great, great criminal defense attorneys, which I'm not, like Mark Garagos and some mm-hmm. others have said that that touch DNA does not put Mr. Koberger in the scene. It just puts his touch he's, DNA maybe there. So he said a lot of great things when it came to has, this yeah. demolition. You know, yeah, he, uh, on all the different mainstream media, like I, I sometimes Garagos, he's he's crazy with some of the stuff he says, mm-hmm. but with the stuff he was saying and has been saying the last few few months, because in the beginning, him and Coffindaffer to me were like, <laughs> you know, but <laughs> but as I've started to warm up to Garagos, and I'm telling you, like that dude. Uh, a few months. I just I like what he says. I really do. Um, well, he's a bright guy and he's an experienced guy. So yeah. you know what I might think about anybody has nothing to do with it. Because again, I'm a civil litigation attorney. But you know that that was a really incisive comment that he made. And you know, talented, brilliant defense attorneys, if they're doing their job in this case, they will bring so much reasonable doubt. And when the judge says, if you have any reasonable doubt, you must find him not guilty. That's why I'm saying I'm not betting the mortgage money, but I'll, I'll bet the coffee money that he could be acquitted. Well, Garagos is a smart lawyer, too, because if yes. you remember yes. when he was representing Scott Peterson, there was I think it was 11 people that had claimed that they witnessed Lacey walking with mm-hmm. black pants. But everybody's like. Man, he's so crappy. He didn't introduce any of the witnesses that were saying that they saw Lacey walking. And the the reason why he didn't is because she wasn't wearing black pants. <laughs> I'd forgotten that little detail. She what was, was she wearing, wearing tan pants. She was wearing tan pants. Oh. So everybody got mad at oh. Garagos thinking that he was incompetent. But really, like oh, no. you're saying, he's no. smart. He's not going to introduce... 11 witnesses claiming that they saw Lacey walking the dog when the family already stated that she quit walking it because she had an episode health wise that had to make her stop walking the dog. So she wasn't walking the dog and the people that said that they seen her, they all claim she was wearing black pants when she was wearing tan. So it would have done more damage to introduce those witness statements because then it, it, it doesn't create reasonable doubt. It creates some, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to yeah. be sneaky? You're bringing up, you know what I mean? So yeah, he is yeah. very smart. Uh, Miss yeah, girl, the cool. Moscow gun and knife show was held February 12th to 13th, 2022 at the Lataw County fairgrounds. Was it the ax throwing contest then? Was, was there the some other, was there some mm-hmm. other okay? I, I, I've, I've seen that one in my research. Was there something else going on that weekend in November 2022, either in Moscow or Pullman or any other time? Because one of my commenters said, Oh, yeah, there was a gun and knife show right that, that weekend. And I, I, I never really, I never said it, it was. Ah, so it was an axe show. That's what it oh, was. An axe show. Or they that, showed... that there was a contest. Do they show. Contest. Do they show knives at axe shows? I don't know anything about no, this. No, it's uh okay. So like you go to like these businesses that they specialize in axe throwing. So yeah. whether you're going there by yourself or as a group, it's more like a group thing. Yeah. You go out with a, f- a few friends, you know, and you guys have you know axes about this big, and you take turns throwing them at a target. That's I it. know about that. There's a business like that, probably That's a 20, it. 25 minute drive from my office here. But what I'm looking for is some show. I was told there was some show where uh, I see that last football game of the season, an ax throwing competition. I know all about that. I know on one of these days when I get really mad and I don't want to take it out on anyone, I'll go to an ax. <laughs> <laughs> but 
what I was told Ooh, by one of my ball. commenters, and it's not checking out, and I, I'll still pursue it, was that there was some kind of a show where guns and knives were being displayed that weekend or maybe the weekend before. And so it's possible that Mr. Kohlberger picked up the knife, looked at it like my family member who had a fascination with this stuff oh. and then put it down. I mean, that's the theory. I don't know if it's true. There's just so much, there's so much out there. Don't you find that, you know, I love my commenters. I really do. But don't you find that some people just are really out there? Yeah. I mean, but you gotta, I mean, they just want the truth. You know, yeah. And, yeah, and I don't hold it against them. You know what I mean? That's oh. why, like, if they do believe, to, you know, it's I don't blame them. They just want the truth. I think the passion comes from the right place, even though sometimes it can be a little misdirected. And it's up to us, the ones that do have the voice and are able to have the voice to kind of be like, hey, you know, this is kind of maybe why or why not? Or, you know, because that's our job. There's you know, we're all in different tiers. And we all have our own strengths, whether it's chilling, lurking, commenting, being on panel, you know. Um, and yeah. when we do it together, uh, you know, that's when uh, the the things that don't make sense can make sense. Because stuff like this right here, that just doesn't make sense. It, it, for this case right here made me change how I shop. I don't pick do shit up at the store. Oh. When, when it came to the DNA, <laughs> yeah. when it came to the DNA and I'm sitting there on my show and I'm like, you know, this is a long ass time ago. And I'm like, holy shit. So somebody could literally touch, touch this cup when I was at the store. And if I oh. did the gross thing and I didn't wash it and then here's I grabbed them, you know, here's, here's uh, how I do my shopping. Uh, <laughs> I do most I of my shopping online. I, I used to I pick stuff stores. up like like what you said, the younger family member. I used to pick stuff up, look at yeah. it, you know. Not no more. Yeah. Shit. Well, I don't know. I, 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 I got, but I, I do most of my shopping this way, right online. I just got That's something. What I need to do, and it's 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 That's just such an easy. And if if it if it's not the right thing, which this is the wrong thing, I ordered one thing and they sent me something else. They'll take it right back. <laughs> They'll tell you don't even, you don't even have to package it up anymore. You just go online, you get a UPC seal, you take it to the locals. Uh, in my case, the local UPS store. You don't even have to package it up. You give them the thing back with the UPC seal. They take it back. It's like that's fantastic. Anyhow, I want to leave you on this note, or I want to leave you on this note, and that is that I've never seen a case. I don't know if you agree or not. I've never seen a case that has more questions and more attention, whether people say he's guilty of sin or he's innocent and he's being you know, framed. I've never seen a case with this much interest and at the same time, so much controversy swirling around it. And one of the things I studied when I was studying for my media degree was marketing and public relations and propaganda. I actually have like nine credits and propaganda this wow, what, we're, what we're looking at right now what we're looking at right now maybe president green is right maybe he's right but it doesn't pass the smell test and it just leaves for really bad optics and so i think that they're making a big mistake i think i think people are going to have more and more skepticism about the judicial system because they've just you know the optics are bad Oh, completely. But I think, and they don't care. Uh, they're no. as far as they're concerned, they want no. the 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 last person that was enrolled at that university when these crimes took place, and can we remember where they were at the day that it took place because they were there, and remember how scared they were, and all these other things. The last person that was enrolled during the crime taking place is the first day where they get to completely move on. I guess so. So it's just, it's just bad optics. It's just, it's bad for the whole system. It's a, this is a sad day for the system, especially in Idaho. You know, here in the east, we kind of look down our noses at those people out west. Anyhow, <laughs> it's, it's yeah. a sad day. It really is. I mean, what are they hiding? Really, with the gag with the gag order and uh, ten rounds of discovery, all of which is sealed. Um, the fact that the uh, DNA. Uh, matter was all um, submitted only for an in-camera review. 28 days ago, 
and there's still been no rule. What are they hiding? Now, maybe nothing. Maybe it's all on the level. Maybe it's all on the up and up. Maybe everything's perfect. But the optics are horrible. The optics are worse than horrible. It's a sad day for the judicial system in Idaho. Not here. It's hard to watch, too. It was really it's, hard to watch. This it is hard to watch. Very. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for hopping up. I appreciate your uh, your company and your conversation. Definitely, if you're not subbed to the law offices of Andrew D. Myers, definitely go over there. And like I said, I'm back home in the studio, so anytime is a good time. You just let me know, and I'd love to I'd love to come back on. And I apologize about the the connection no there before. Uh, we'll we'll do a makeup. It's so good to be with you. Thank you for inviting yeah. me. I appreciate it. Have a great, well, great, great podcast. Thank you. I appreciate your time and your company, sir. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> Definitely go sub. Let me throw the link in there again for you guys. If you're not sub, definitely go sub. They got a great channel over there. Go ahead and share that real quick. There you go. And there's Laney Law as well. Shout out to both of them. Thank you so much. <laughs>